to the Psy Squad Pod. Hello. Hi. What's up? <laughs> oh, hi, Brendan. I still be here, but I am hurt after we didn't beat the record for the longest game in NHL. That was a bummer. But we'll get back to that later. Yeah. Well, it's alright. Your Blackhawks can maybe break that later. No, they're not. No, there's no chance. No, no chance. No, because no, no Blackhawks are going to put up six against Mark andre Fleury. Oh, yeah. We want to play against Leonard. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of goals. Well, actually, speaking of goals. So, for those that don't know, and I hope you all are watching it, today, at a today of recording, it is a Tuesday here. Mm-hmm. Um, the MLS's back final is currently going on. It is 1-1. Currently, Portland's about to take a free kick, so I'll give you live updates, even though this technically isn't live. But um, So yeah, so Portland and Orlando are meeting in the final. Uh, two MLS is back tournament MVPs and Sebastian Blanco and Luis Nani are playing in it, and it's so far it's a really good game. Uh, Larice Mabiala with the first goal for Portland off a really good ball from Diego Valeri on the free kick, who's about to take another one. And then, um, what was his first name? Mauricio. M- Mauricio Perea. Scored the equalizer for Orlando. No, I did not witness that one because we were watching some insane. Oh, free kick by Valeri. It is taken poorly. So still one one. But I'm overwhelmed with all the sports we were watching. We were watching the five overtime thriller. Yeah. So I missed the Orlando goal. But this is our two pretty good. Uh, I mean, this I actually I have finals that no one predicted. But they have two players that are playing really good right now. Luis Nani and Sebastian Blanco. Um, both have really elite coaches. Both just. It's just, it's just a good final, and so far it's living up to that. Like I can't really emphasize enough that's already we don't know already about Orlando. And I'm, also, I'm watching the game as we speak. Luis Nani's struggling right now, which is a bummer because I think he's going to win MVP. But um, the MLS is actually tomorrow. Apparently, there's going to be some regular season games, so they are back with the regular season. So what they're Yay. doing, I don't know. So what they're doing is they're doing like four phases, mm-hmm. and they're gonna play regionally. The only teams that aren't confirmed yet are Canada, the Canadian teams, because they're gonna have the Canadian teams play each other. But those are not confirmed yet because the Canadian government is making it quite difficult. Mm. No, excuse me. So far, no fans in the stands, except for in Dallas and Kansas City. Weird that it was, that's it gonna be in Dallas because they had the pull from the MLS's back tournament because they had too many COVID cases. Yeah, so I'm very intrigued to see how that goes. Now, FC Dallas doesn't exactly draw good crowds anyway, generally, which is a bummer. Um, I mean, it's good at this moment. At this moment, it's awesome. But um, it'll be interesting. So, like, for example, like, Minnesota will play, like, Sporting Kansas City, Houston. They actually play Dallas, too, which I'm very, very, very worried about, By in case you all were wondering. I'm very worried about that. Do you want to go? Do I want to go? Yeah, you can drive down, you can drive down to Kansas City and, and watch it. You said Kansas City is doing fans, right? Let's go! It's only a six-hour drive, six or seven hours. It's not that bad. Okay. not bad. I drove When's to the, game? the middle of Iowa to watch Rock. Not that bad. So, okay. Um, so no one's going to be leaving us right now. He's got to hit the road. To I was going to say, okay, but but dead ass though, I'm actually going to do a little bit of research while you guys are, are talking about stuff. So... It can't be that expensive for tickets. Oh, right? God, no. You can, for MLS games, you can, like, for, so, like, for example, like, at... It's gotta be, like, baseball, right? Yeah, and they're probably cheap. So, like, at Allianz Field, which is, like, the brand... Keep in mind, this is, like, the brand spanking new stadium in for the Loons. We were... I've been able to sit lower level every single game for, like, less than 200 bucks total for both yeah. tickets. Like, for the, for, for the first game, the first game I went to, I was, like, row one. Like, row one. The field is right there. Um... Now that was a birthday gift, but they were like 150 bucks a piece for a playoff game. I was like 12 rows up, 70 bucks a piece. Damn. Like they're a pretty good deal. And then, yeah. So, oh, that's a great. Oh. When when I went to Lambo, we were 13. I was 13 rows up, and my pair of tickets were 700 and something oh, for the football, pair. Football tickets are so ridiculous. expensive, so worth it. Oh, I'm sh- I sure it's worth it. It's all right. I'll be spending that kind of money soon when I go to SoFi Stadium someday, but but yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see, I think it's a great idea to keep things regionalized it'll be interesting to see, like now all the MLS players do not have COVID because they've kept testing, have not had any positive cases since Dallas and Nashville both pulled out of term due to COVID cases uh, Are they doing a bubble as well? They did do a bubble, they did in Orlando another proof that, proof in the pudding that every sports league should probably do it until 
COVID goes away, which, I mean, who knows? Does, yeah. Well, NFL, I know. I think, listen up. Yeah, exactly, because I do not want to miss out on football. We're already missing out on college football. Right. But well, um, I'm excited that it's back. So, we're conti- if I, if that means I can't go to a Loons game, but that means Minnesota United wins MLS Cup, I will take that 10 times out of 11. There you go. So, I also noticed that the first games back are back-to-back Dallas versus Nashville teams. Yes, because they want to get them caught up as best they can. Okay, so they are going to get caught up with the rest of the yes, season. Yes, they're, they're so. going to get caught up with the rest of the season, so they're okay. playing each other back-to-back. Um, and, at, and both Dallas and Nashville have not had any positive cases since they returned back home to their respective cities. Huh. Cool. Which is awesome. Hopefully it stays like that. But uh, I... I hope so too. It's not another baseball shit show. No, no, I, I don't know. I, I feel like if, uh, yeah, I guess, and really, the only shit show that's going on is the fucking Cardinals. Yeah, to well, fair, it was the, the Marlins at first. Yeah. yeah, but they got their shit together. They got their shit together quick. The Cardinals are still getting COVID cases. You hear why? Why? Because they went out partying and. Uh, oh, the Marlins. Yep. Oh yeah, I knew that. Out. The Cardinals went out to a casino. Yep. Fucking idiots. But you know, sports handling their COVID really well. Who? Hockey. Hockey. Yeah. Oh. No positive tests. I like. But wait, but wait. Can something. horses even get COVID? Well. Because I know, I know they tested a couple animals can. They've been, they've been on and off on which animals can. can. I don't think horses can get COVID. So I think NHL would probably be fine. Yeah, the problem is you have the the jockeys though, the coaches. Oh yeah. Well, and also if you think about it, especially with tonight's game. They don't need COVID. They're just going to run them out of energy anyway. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, so uh, if you have been living under a rock, uh, tonight uh, the Blue Jackets and the Lightning played, and we postponed our podcast till this game was over. So our podcast ended up being late. The game was supposed to be ended an hour before our podcast, and it went into five overtimes. To be honest, Boston and, Car- and Carolina... Got postponed to tomorrow. They probably would have been like halfway through the second period by now. Yeah, yeah. Like we would be giving you live updates on them, but they well live. <laughs> yeah, as best uh, we can. But uh, they are tomorrow now, so you're gonna have to wait and hear about it later. But um, I'm excited. Uh, NHL is back. We had two close games. Both had the same score. Be caught because uh, earlier today was uh, the Flames and the Stars, which the Flames won three to two. After one guy scored two goals in the first period for the Flames, the Stars rallied back when the Flames got the go ahead goal in the third. But yeah, hockey is crazy tonight. Now we still have uh, Chicago and Vegas who are playing in Edmonton, so their game didn't get affected by the five overtime um you know as much as I want to you know sit here and be like full heartedly be like Chicago's going to just destroy I think Chicago's strength is in their fourth line which is it's an interesting place to have strength but it's always been kind of where Chicago has had strength I think the game might be more interesting than people think because we were not expecting uh, Edmonton, the Edmonton Chicago game could work out that way, but the same reason why I said Chicago would win the Edmonton series is why I'm going to assume they're probably not going to win the Vegas series because Vegas actually lead led the regular season series two to one. Uh, just a quick update: according to the American Veterinary uh, Medical Association. There has been no link with horses and humans contacting COVID. So horses, so far, the horses, NHL is safe, basically. NHL is safe. Uh, they just need to eliminate all human aspect. Just put the horses in there. They can't get COVID. Uh, you can even have horse fans, possibly. That might be kind of a fun way to fill the stadium. <laughs> uh, that would be a fun way to fill the stadium. Imagine a bunch of wild horses just running around. The but, then, but then wouldn't the Philly, Delphia... Flyers have the best shot because they'd have all the Phillies in the stand. Fat kid Phillies? No, no. Philly is female you're horse. Not, you're not talking about food truck? No, no. Philly is a female horse. Fat kid Phillies. 
I, I actually did not know a female horse was called a Philly. I didn't either. Wait. Are Philly cheesesteaks made up of horses? <laughs> of horses? <laughs> you are breaking news from the Sasquatch Pod. Are all Philly sandwiches made out of horse meat? To be fair, all hockey is played with horses, according to us, so... <gasps> Well, is everything just been horses this whole time? Are cows even real? What is a cow? Whoa, oh, have you ever a seen a cow thing. close up? I don't think so. Have you ever I watched have. a cow been turned into meat? Because I haven't. I haven't either. I don't want to see that. I like cows. I mean, we all like cows. I've but... seen them up close, actually, Ben. I think they're very real. But they act like very large dogs. So I wonder... Well, if... They you are just know. dogs that are what, controlling what if it's robots. A, what if it's a horse in a costume? What if it's a dog in a costume? <gasps> the possibilities are endless. What if it's all just cake? <laughs> no. It always has been. <laughs> it always has been. <laughs> and this has been the meme zone with the Sex Squad pod. Was I a good meme? No. <laughs> so, uh, horses uh, doing good... Uh, a, a sport not doing very good. We kind of mentioned it a little bit ago. Uh, what's it called? Baseball. Baseball. Well, I'd say some are doing good. But the Cardinals are really striking out. I thought. I think compared to other sports, you could probably say they're not doing very well because you look at the other major sports: NBA, MLS, and hockey, who haven't had any cases really. Um, so yeah. You know what? You know what team is going to be the. St. Louis Cardinals of the NFL. If the Browns, the Browns, the Browns. I was the going to the Jets. No, it's gonna be the Browns. No, it's gonna be the Browns. <laughs> They're gonna go party. It's gonna be OBJ, Jarvis Landry. There's a Baker chance. Mayfield. There's a chance that it might be even like the Dolphins. Like I'm just trying to think of like the really Especially young Dolphins. teams. Nah, Especially being Dolphins in Miami, got, Dolphins got a culture change. God, Cleveland will be the ones that fuck it up. It's gonna be Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> That's so Cleveland. That's it's gonna so be clean. Cool. I'm now set on that. They're gonna be the ones that are gonna fuck it up. Well, a quick look at baseball, though. Uh, so far, the it could be the Washington football team too. That's true. That's true. Washington Ron Rivera won't let that happen. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is true. But Dan Schneider would promote it. That's fair. In the West, the Athletics are ahead twelve to five, having a great season so far. The Twins, eleven to six, great season. Love Bomber Squad. They're doing great. Who's the best team in the uh, MLB right now? Uh, right now it's the, the Athletics. What? Oh, is it the Athletics? Yeah. The Athletics, and then it goes. Athletics are have twelve wins. Rockies and Twins both have eleven. And the Cubs have ten, don't they? And the Cubs have. You are correct there. Tied with. No, the Cubs have played three less games, though. The yeah. Cubs have ten wins. The Yankees have also have ten wins. And the Cubs have played three less games because yeah. they had a three-game series against St. Louis could cancel. Right. Uh, the Athletics are 9-1 and one in their last ten, though. So Ooh. They are killing it in the Athletics side. Cubs are 8-2. So. Yeah, we lost to freaking Kansas City. So they're already almost... Uh, Six of the Six way. the way done. Well, almost a that's crazy. Third of the way, if they're getting towards twenty. Yeah. Sixty games. Yeah. Uh, and actually, they also just came out with uh, new things that they're looking at. They're looking at maybe creating a playoff bubble. Which I think is a brilliant idea if they will be. I also agree with that. The the three other major major sports we've been talking about have all done bubbles and they've all worked flawlessly right. up to this point. Yeah. So. I think I think not only MLB, but I think NFL should do the same thing. Oh, I agree. I think they should take the whatever playoff teams make it. They should stick them in really nice hotels, make them stay there. Oh no, they have to stay in a nice hotel for a couple of weeks Uh-oh. so they can play professional baseball. Oh man, a rough resort. life. <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting because it seems like the NFL's problem right now is actually the players' association. Well, yeah, the players' association didn't want to do a bubble, but I think if. MLB's bubble, if, they, if their postseason bubble goes flawlessly and it's a good success, I don't know why the NFL wouldn't just replicate that. Especially because they're their own sport. They're not just another sport in America's sports market. I think the NFL has done an okay job with COVID. There hasn't been a huge number of COVID cases. No, yet. But, right, but they also stopped reporting them. 
Yeah, but a couple of players who were on the COVID list initially are going to cook off. I know Matt Stafford and Gardner Minshew were two big guys they haven't put on the list right away who both got taken Right, off. well, see, the problem with the NFL, since we're getting into the NFL. The Bears. Is. What about the Bears? Bears might mess it up. Ah, uh, yeah. the Bears. Damn, we got to play the Bears twice a year. Lions? Lions will just try to inflict yeah. poison damage on the uh, <laughs> Packers. Anyways, though, back to. <laughs> I was saying the COVID tests for Minshew and for Stafford both were positive and then negative, negative. So they didn't actually have it. So it's the testing that was flawed in those situations. And I'm scared that that could affect, like, an important game where, say, someone like Patrick Mahomes will test positive and then... He's out for two weeks or something. Well, he's out for the game and then they test him the next day. And he's negative. Didn't they? Didn't they? After the Matt Stafford, did they change the rules? After the, after Matt Stafford, they changed it so now that if it comes out, if it comes up positive, but they're asymptomatic, they can take two more. And if they're both negative, they can go back right away. Well, there's something like, something along that line. Where the after the Matt Stafford, they changed the rule that you can come back if you're asymptomatic and you, you have a positive, they can test you more to see if it's a false positive. I hope that's the way they do it. I feel like that happy because yeah, because you're gonna have a situation like that. Yeah, it's gonna take one key player to be out, and then it's like, well, shoot. Well, at least the NFL is doing better than college football right oh, now. Oh my lord! The SEC might have some t- a couple extra teams. Nebraska, Iowa. Yeah, they might. Oh, they seem like to be the only conference playing, and I hope that Big, they. Big go Twelve and- said they're gonna play too. Are they? Mm-hmm. So Nebraska will probably hop over to the Big 12. Big 12. Yep. So, that would be nice. So a quick, this is the exact wording for it. So uh, any tier one or two, two employees, such so players and coaches, who produces a positive test and is asymptomatic and has no history of the coronavirus infection, so they didn't come, with any, come into contact with anybody with coronavirus. Right. They can, if they produce two negative tests, they can take more, they can take two more tests. And if they produce two negative tests within 24 hours, they, they are allowed to resume with normal activity. So they so they could come back. So let's say let's say Patrick Holmes gets tested positive on Sat on Saturday. He if he takes two more tests Saturday, and they both come back negative. He could play Sunday. Okay. So that kind of be like a DeAndre Ayton thing yesterday, where he missed the test, and so he obviously he's in Orlando. Yeah. They just kept him quarantined until they came back with the negative test, and then they. I guess they drove him to the game, and really? he played in the second half. Yeah, it was huh. crazy. So, yeah. So, well, players will get the opportunity to keep playing, that's good. thankfully. That's something they tweaked after Matt Stafford yeah, so. came back. Which is good. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad that they're learning. I hope they learn from all these other leagues yeah. with, like, the little things. Yeah, NFL really is the league that benefits the most because they literally have seen all the trials and errors that have failed, with, like, that have been good. And this is just proves why the like again, it just is another thing for the NFL to prove that they're king. It's like, well, look, we have perfected the way without being in a bubble while still being in our own markets and allowing fans, and that'll just continue to make NFL the best sport in America because they're right. they're gonna figure. I think the NFL will figure this out. I really do because that's just I the way they. So, yeah. That's honestly just the way the NFL is. The NFL is just so just enriched, enriched in American society that. They're gonna they're gonna figure out a way for it to make it work, whether it's limited capacity or they only open up certain sections of the stadium or something. They're gonna figure something out. I fully expect the NFL to be successful with their efforts. Hopefully, hopefully, yes, hopefully. Oh, excuse me, hopefully. But well, uh, with college football, yes, uh, the Big Ten and all the presidents and all that, yeah, had a meeting today and decided not to play. And the Pac-12, yeah, the Pac-12. Tons of players are coming out against. These presidents and people who don't see the day-to-day operations, don't see what's going on, just kind of, they get paid anyway, so that's the kind of the stance the players are well, taking. We want to play, Yeah, you just want to get paid and not have to worry about it. Yeah, it's, it's honestly kind of a tricky situation because a lot of players do want to play regardless of COVID because, you know, you've got a lot of college players who need to make their case for the next right. NFL draft. And I, I, I saw an interesting take on the other day talking about like Joe Burrow b- made his made his whole case for the NFL draft in his last year. Yeah, okay. he, if, if that last year wouldn't have happened, he 
wouldn't, he wouldn't, he would be looking for a job, and he'd be a yeah. seventh round draft pick. Exactly. So he would have gone to the Patriots. I, 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 it makes sense why these <laughs> players want to play, but as protecting not only the players but as a whole student base as a whole, letting these players play and then go to classes and stuff, it's just it puts so much risk on not only players but non-players. Yeah. Because right. that, that's the thing that we all need to remember too is these are still college athletes. Like these are yeah, student they're college kids. They're still going to go to their college classes, sit next to the same forty or fifty people every week. And, and not to mention after games, they would they would go to like a party and you know do all that. And that's the thing. That's like the human life elements that people just don't talk about. Yeah, these college guys are going to go to class and they're going to go to parties and then they're going to carry all that stuff into the next game. And it's just it's just a whirlwind of just stuff that just doesn't need to happen. Now. Here's my thing. I'm okay with them canceling college football if they would just cancel this year. Because you have to put the safety of just not only your student-athletes, but your students. Right. Like, Ben Robin, like ben said it perfectly. Like, the, this isn't just your guys' campus. This is everyone's campus. This is Call that to Alabama, though. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm at, I'm at, you pay Nick Saban a few million bucks, and then you get more money to make new facilities, and it's just ridiculous. But that's going to get to my next point. The fact that they moved it to spring just continues to prove my point that the NCAA and all these colleges are money are money hungry, just ridiculous people that want college football to keep going because yeah. it's going to make them money. Because here's what they putting it to spring is an awful idea. Because what's going to happen is they're going to move to fall to spring, and then there's there's no plans to, to change it into the fall. So they would go from spring to fall. Plus, right. And how does that work? Do you go from sophomore to junior? Do you stay because yeah, like how's it going to work? Yeah, that's weird. But I'm just more talking about the player safety just outside of COVID. They right. could get hurt doing that. Oh, easily. Like yeah. they could get hurt. Plus, it's going to be interesting with the NFL because if they go into spring, the draft's already set for it, end of April. Right. Yeah. And then you have your combine. They're going to go. They're going to go at the college season like one or two weeks combine, then draft. They're going to have no time between. There's going to be no time between college, the combine, and draft, which is going to affect COVID cases because there's no there's no quarantine period. There's no. There's, right. there's, yeah. They're going to come I, right uh, from college into the combine, and they're going to be all these kids from all these different schools around the country. Yeah. Here's my prediction for the thought with the NFL. We're going to see the most wild NFL offseason we've ever seen this next offseason. Because there, there's going to be trades galore. And there's going to, and you can even quote me on this right now. You heard it here first in the Side Squad Pod. There's going to be ridiculous trades. When I say ridiculous, I'm talking about like desperate, like desperate trades. Because they are not going to be able to rely on the draft. There's not going to be enough there. In right. terms of game film, to trust the only guys who are like a first sure thing to get drafted right now: Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Penae Sewell, the tackle out of Oregon. The only first sure things you can trust. That's three out of how many picks do they have in the NFL draft? Two hundred forty something. Two hundred some. What about Jamar Chase out of LSU? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, Brennan. Jamar Chase. Right. There's always going to be that. Oh, couple. and 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 that linebacker from Penn State who opted. I can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's that. actually interesting. I was watching a video about that the other uh, the other night. How teams who have let's say have a player coming up, let's say you have a big guy, and let's say you have a big running back coming up who needs a lot of money, you don't pay. You're not going. You're not. It's going to be so hard to replace him in the draft. Yeah, because, no. There's going to be absurd contract extensions. There's going to be absurd trades. Like ones where you scratch your head and be like, "Is that worth it?" No, there's going to be trades that are not going to be worth it. But they're going to get so desperate for what they needed through the draft that they're just going to do it through off season and free agency and whatever. This is going to be the most wild off season we've ever seen. We had thought this off season was wild. You just wait till next year. I saw a, a conspiracy theory that Brian Goodgrass knew that, and that's why he drafted Dylan and Jordan Love this year because he didn't know he was going to be, get, be able to get a replacement running back next year for campaign. Aaron Jones. I like that. I like that game. Because if we can't pay Aaron Jones next year, we, we won't be able to rely on the draft. Sucks. We already have AJ Dillon. Yeah, that, that's that's smart thinking that you would never have thought of when everybody. Yeah. Actually, that really sets up the Packers what nice because if there is people trying to replace your yeah. franchise tag, you know Aaron Jones or even your your second guy, they're not Jamal AJ Williams. Williams. Yeah, Jamal Williams. You franchise tag and ship. Yeah, 
and you get value out of somebody that was just going to walk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting. Yeah, to say least. All I know is just bad move by the NCAA, and they just continue to prove my point with stuff like this, because if they actually cared about the student-athletes, they would have just canceled the season. And, yeah, the players would have been pissed, but you have to explain to them that we're not, we can't just consider your guys' livelihood. We have to consider everyone else's, our professors, right. our employees, our other students that actually have to pay to go to school. You're right. Yeah. These are the people we also have to worry about. But now we're, we're gonna, we want to use you guys because you're going to make us billions upon billions of dollars. So you, we're going to move you to the spring, turn it around, and then, oh, you got regular, regularly scheduled college football. They should have just canceled because then it's easier on the the reschedule. That's the thing people forget about this is like them rescheduling all, like, oh, we're going to play until late December. Now you have to worry about the next season, about yeah. how you're going to get back on track. And you're going to take this time to get back on track and you either take it we want to get playing right away or like we just need to take a year off and just wait until we can get back to the schedule that we are accustomed to so it's going to be interesting how all sports leagues not just college football and the NFL might be fine because they may be able to start on time but like Major League Soccer MLS Cup is in middle of December and they usually kick off like late February That that's not going to happen they're going to have to delay it to at least the middle of March and then they're going to have to condense all these games just to get back on schedule. Or what does the NBA do? Like, they're going to have to play it. NBA would have to play a shortened season next year. They would have to. Same thing with NHL. Right, you'd think so. They would have to. Just that they want to get back to their regularly scheduled, like, whatever. You Unless know? you're going to forever change it, which I don't see Which happening. I don't see happening either. Which I don't think they should, you know. Yeah. Really, it's really a wild time for sports. It's going to be interesting to see how the next couple months play out. Oh, yeah, for sure. But we are less than a month away from NFL, baby. Yes, sir. Texans Chiefs, September tenth. Can't wait for it. I, I'm very excited. Very excited. I got tons of money on it. Yep, probably the wrong team. Uh, I, the hope, Texans. I hope you're not betting on the Texans there, bud. Well, just DeAndre Hop or not DeAndre Hop. Yeah, no, he's not there. What's his name? Quarterback. Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. Watson. Just Deshaun Watson. The rest of the team, I don't care about. I yeah. just need Deshaun to have. Two touchdowns and I think three hundred yards. Oh, that's not that's not too bad. I mean, he does have three receivers. Yeah, four receivers mm-hmm. instead of just one. We'll, we'll see what happens, sir. But NFL, so much back. No, do you want to go into franchise mode? I do want to go into franchise mode. All right, all right. Titans edition. Titans edition. All right. So I'm going to add a fun element to this whole... Fr- so I'm the GM, right? Yeah. Yes, so sir. I'm the GM. So I'm, but I'm not the owner. No. no. I no. am going to try and solve, create... I'm going to create our own bubble. All right. Like the First, Saints. Like the Saints. Perfect. You cannot travel. We live in Nashville, Tennessee. There is everything for you here. Yeah. Grocery stores. Fair. Whatever. True. Whatever. You cannot leave this proximity of Nashville, Tennessee, including for training camp. We are having training camp at Nissan Stadium or at our training facility because, you know, they go to, like, different, you know, yeah. suburbs. Nope. Nissan Stadium, be here for practice. Hmm. This is where we're staying. This is where we are. And if I find you guys – and another thing, too, like, this is going to sound so, like, whatever, but no, like, crazy extracurricular stuff unless it's with, with your family that you know doesn't have COVID or anything. And if we find out that you're at a fucking club and you caught a case with someone with COVID, we're, you're, you're not playing for us. We can't risk that. Fair. Or at least you, you're getting a suspension, a fine. or No, you're being suspended. Not a fine, but suspended. Because we don't, we don't want you around our teammates, around our team messing shit up. Especially right. with the Titans, our football team, who can be a dark horse Super Bowl contender this year. So y'all ain't messing our thing up. You cannot leave Nashville. You can't leave within, like, 25 miles within the Nashville city borders or something like that. Some, you know, whatever. So that's all about how it's all that issue. Now for the actual on-the-field stuff. So the Titans are seventh in the NFL in cap space. they still got about 20, like $23 million in cap space. I do, so it's going to be interesting. So in turn, so the Titans combined for – one sec, I have to. I had the stats saved. I'm so sorry, guys. You're all good. But um, the the tight. Oh yeah, Titans had 55 team sacks last year. I would like another pass rusher, and I can get one for cheap. 
I've been saying it for every single thing because I'm just surprised he's still a free agent. Why not just bring in Everson Griffin? Why not just bring him in? Or at this at this situation, I don't even know if they really would need him as much, but like bring back Logan Ryan. I'm not a big right. Malcolm Butler guy anyway. I'm really not. I think he's dipped since his Super Bowl. Uh, well, sorry, he wasn't Super Bowl MVP, but like his moment his moment, that. right? Ha- he had another good year in New England. Ha- wasn't the same sense. I want to bring back Logan Ryan. I would choose him over a, a pass rusher because we still have. Um, because the thing is, is there's no really like major like nose tackles that we would want. Because we need a, we would need a nose tackle to replace Joe Case Casey. There's just none in the market that we would want. David Harrison. Damon Harrison still a free agent. Yes, he is. Snack Harrison. Sign. Okay, perfect. I want I want Snack Harrison. See, if you can get him cheap, I heard Everson Griffin is looking for two or three years, ten to twenty million hmm. for his deal. Well, but you can get fucking Damon Harrison for him. Probably two or three million a year. Yeah, no, uh, I, oh, no, that's it. I just want, I want, I didn't know he was still a free agent. Damon Harrison. My, my Daniel's new contract was two and a half a year, yeah. which is not quite the the was a million, but mm-hmm. it, it's not a lot. Yeah, and I didn't even know he was still a free agent. Honestly, with Logan Ryan, now that he switched his position to safety, he's probably going to, in theory, want more money because he compares stats to other safeties. It's ridiculous, but that's just how he's viewing it, which is a good move on his end, his own personal end. Hey, Noah, just. Throwing something out there, right? Logan Ryan does want to come back to the Titans. We're just going to say that okay. for this session. What about a guy like Eric Reed? Don't really need a don't really need a safety to be honest. We still have uh, oh yeah, still have Ke- we still have a uh, Kevin Byard, Kevin Byer and Kenny Vaccaro. So we're fine yeah. at safety. But it, honestly, I would just go get Snag Harrison. Yeah. Like that would be it. We needed we need a tackle to replace Drell Casey. And honestly, like. The Titans, in terms of what we need, is not as, like... What's that? I need to pull up the depth chart. The only thing I worry about is our offensive line, because we lost um, Jack Conklin to the to free agency. We replaced him with Isaiah Wynn. My only thing with Isaiah Wynn, which is honestly probably just fine, he is a better pass blocker than a run blocker. That's how he was at Georgia. Yeah. Which is fine, because we have King Derrick Henry on our team. And that's how we're going to build our team. It shouldn't be complicated. He got us to the AFC Championship. We're a run first football team. Now, because here's the thing too, I just don't trust Ryan Tannehill as much as other people do, like in terms of me, but like obviously we have him. He brought us to the AFC Championship. We need to keep him on the team. We extended him. Yeah. Right. You know, whatever. I wouldn't have extended him, but we did. It is what it is. Um, but we live or die with Derrick Henry. Plain and simple, f- f- limit Ryan Tannehill. But here's the thing with Ryan Tannehill. AJ Brown is going to be the next rise, a big rising star wide receiver. Yeah. We can utilize him. So offensively, I am not too worried for the grand scheme of things. And honestly, even defensively, except for no sense, because we have Jeffrey Simmons and Vic Beasley um, who are going to rush the passer. I like, I, I like not love our linebacking core in Rashawn Evans and Harold Landry. And the only thing I don't like about our secondary is Malcolm Butler, so that's why I would like to bring, bring Logan Ryan in. But he's probably going to want more money than we what we would really want to give him. Um, plus he wants to play safety. Plus he wants to play safety. And we don't need a safety. Kenny Vaccaro, Kevin Byer. But Kevin Byer is a top 10 safety in football. Yeah. So I would bring in Zach Harrison to replace Daquan Jones. I would. And we have no depth at that position. So that's what I would do. In terms of what we would do for the season, I would say we're at maximum an 11-win football team. I could see us winning between 9 to 11 games, taking that division with a cold team that I'm not too set on. For a Jacksonville team that's going to contend for the number one overall pick, and for a Houston team that is one-dimensional offensively, and it just they're just not as good. Their roster is not as complete defensively. So, what's the one dimension of Houston? The what? You said Houston's a one-dimensional team. Is it Will Fuller or is it David Johnson? No. Um, so okay. So here's what I said about the Texans. So they have Brandon Cooks, Kenny Stills, right? Uh, um, Fuller. Will Fuller, no, well, and Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb. They all are the same receiver, just different age. Basically, and you. So basically, all you have to do is figure out how to guard one receiver. You figure out how, to, or like how to scheme for that for them, which is basically take away the short routes, don't let them get past you with their speed. And I, and Randall Cobb's not as fast as he once was, and Kenny Stills has never been a number one guy. So we can figure that out so easily if we have a good secondary. Now again, the Texans are gonna the Texans are gonna win a few football games. Like the Texans will put up some points in the seat. Like they have talented receivers. I just think once you face a good defensive team to figure out how to scheme for them defensively, they're not gonna get anything done. 
and the Texans' offensive line is still terrible outside of um, Larry Tunzel. I think great. I love Larry Tunzel. That was great. That in the end, that was a great pickup by Houston because he played very, very well. But I think you're probably the most complete team in that division. We don't have the best quarterback play, but with the team that we have, that's just fine. Ryan Tannehill is going to be riding a lot of confidence into the season, so. So that's what I would do with the. Yeah. That's what I would do with the Texans nice. or the Titans. I think the Titans really don't have any major holes. No, no, they really don't. Like there are teams that are just more talented than us, but we can't fix that. Like, like we can't just be like, let's just go sign all these talent. We just can't do that. But in terms of what we have, I love what we have. That's why Tennessee's a dark horse contender because they can beat all these good teams. We've seen them do it. We've seen them do it. They beat Baltimore and Kansas City in the same season. Yep. You know, obviously, like Baltimore and Kansas City are going to be more talented than us, like, and that's without question. But um, well, and think plus every other team Kansas City played <laughs> in the playoffs, they also put up like thirty yeah. points and had a thirty point lead at again. Tex- Texans had a twenty four point lead. They blew it in a quarter. Which yeah. will never happen against any other team. It te- Houston could play the, um, the other twenty. It, they could play the rest of the thirty teams in the NFL. If they were up twenty-four nothing, they'd win that game. They'd be thirty and zero. Mm-hmm. But against Kansas City, it's not a for sure thing. That's just how crazy Mahomes is. But um, that is that's how I would fix. It, it, not really fix. I would just bring in. Honestly, I would just bring in a new nose tackle, and if we can get it for the right price, Logan Ryan. But I don't think that would work out with our with. You know, the cap, like, we're fine on cap, but it's just, you know, but if, if we're trying to go for what could be a Super Bowl run, bring in Snack Harrison, he can stuff the run. And he's actually one of the best pass rushing defense tackles in the game. And actually, last year with the Lions was one of his statistical best seasons. Yes, exactly. So, I didn't know he was still, I, again, I just assumed he would, he would have been picked up by somebody. Right. Same thing I would assume with, you know, Jadavian Clowney, Logan Ryan. I feel like Jadavian Clowney has been picked up because of Jadavian Clowney. No, Jim well, no, I, right. He's his own, bad he example because he, he, he's his own fault for that, and I would never give that money to him. But no. Damn it, yeah. Never. I saw one thing said he wants 15 to $20 million a year. That's disgusting. Which would put him as one of the highest, not even just the highest defensive players in general. That's pure. that's like that's like what they just gave Miles Garrett, who's young and who's already more successful in his career. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to pay that kind of money no. for inconsistency and the, for him to play two good games a year. And plus, is Jadavian Clowney even strong enough to dent a quarterback's head? That this is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Miles Garrett is. Miles Garrett is. We know that. Yeah, it's just got ejected for headbutting somebody. What? <laughs> That's fucking awesome! Oh, what? See, Giannis is like, I am Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I am Buck. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Giannis is like, I am, I am deer. <laughs> I, I am the box. <laughs> she Jeez. is the box. Literally, if Giannis leaves the box, they're gonna what? Crutch off of Chris Middleton? Oh, the they, 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 would, they would not. They would. They would not be a playoff team if Zion or if uh, Giannis left. They would. They would give New York a run for their money on being the worst team in the league. Dude, no, Bucks would definitely be a better team than the Knicks. They just wouldn't be a playoff team because Zion is the difference maker. Giannis, right? Giannis is Giannis. Like I'll just start you said with that. Zion. You did not too. Dang it, Duncan. <laughs> Duncan said Giannis. No, I the, think the, no, I messed up and said Zion. No, no, he, he said he said Zion got ejected for headbutt. I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to look at the tape. Speaking of NBA, the yeah. National Bird Association, <laughs> bird. Bird. they're birds now. Well, to the be fair, one of their for the bourgeoisie. To be fair, one of their best, like one of the best players in league history's last name is Bird. This is true, Larry Bird. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> well, the NBA's Lawrence going Curry. great right now. Uh, yeah, we were crowning TJ Warren as the bubble god. We can. I don't know how you guys were doing he that. Kinda, well, he was. He was going off, but he, then, was, he but, was doing okay. But then he Dam- was doing then, better than okay. Then Damian Lillard was just like, "All right, that's cute. I'll take over." Yeah, I'm still. I'm tonight. still. My vote's still D book. No, I. I think it's easily Damian. Okay, but has. Dime dropping Dame gone seven and zero in the. No, they have not. That's why Devin Booker should be number two. 
But uh, Damian Lillard is willing Portland the victories right now, and he's putting up insane gross Did numbers. Booker put up 60-plus points back-to-back? He did not. No, but he's consistently yeah. put up 30 points. Yeah, but so Damian, is Dame. It's, it's, yeah, so is Damian. Dame's consistently putting up 40, at least. True. But, um, yeah, Dame's killing it. Uh, Dame's killing it. That's the, the, D-Book's the, killing it. D-Book is killing it. Like, I will not deny that. I would just give it to uh, Damian. That's fair. Uh, D-Book's shooting his shot so well that it's even working off the court. Yep. Uh, that's all I'm saying. But, uh, all I'm saying. So, Dame and PG having some beef yeah. on social media. Just keep I it. love it. I love it because Damian always, like, has the upper hand with Paul George. Yep. He is easily the better player. He literally just drilled a half quarter in his fucking face to beat him, and then Paul George is all of a sudden just has like this beef, even though Damian kicks his ass every single time. Right. It's just trending Dame man. Yeah. Dude, Damian Lillard oh my god, he's a freak. Seriously, I want no part of Portland if we have to play him in the playoffs. I want no part of it. I want no part of trying to guard Damian Lillard. I want no part of that. I don't want that. See, you might not have to, though, because Portland and, and Phoenix are two of the four teams currently competing True. for the eighth seed in the God, that would be East. Such a good East or West. Well, and now, so as it stands right <laughs> now, Portland is the eighth seed. The yep. actual eighth seed. So then Memphis is actually the ninth seed. Well, so are that they means. Ninth or are they tenth? They're ninth. So Memphis would actually technically, because they only take the ninth seed. So it would be Memphis playing Portland. Yeah, but, but obviously, if, if Phoenix wins tomorrow, then or yeah, tomorrow, right? Did they play tomorrow? Yeah, but Dallas. Does play. Memphis have another game? I don't know. Yes, Memphis plays. That's awesome. Memphis plays the Bucks. Oh, they're getting they're getting so as long as Memphis Giannis doesn't Bucks, get suspended, then yeah. yeah. Memphis Bucks Suns Mavericks. Uh, Suns Mavs. Which. The Mavs are a beatable team. They and beat us before. Portland. Portland has one more. Who, do they, who does well, Portland Well, Portland play? plays the Nets, so. The Nets have been randomly good. They have. They secured, they've secured that eight seed. What about the fourth team? They're actually seventh seed they secured the right seventh. now. The Nets are actually the seventh seed right now. But they won't drop less than the eight. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they secured the seventh. Oh, they secured the seven. Cons- yeah, the magic. Uh, yeah, the East is. Oh, eight. that was that. Oh, guys, Portland's got a real update. Portland's a really good free kick opportunity right here. Ooh. Oh, it was like just outside the penalty box. The so it was not over. quite a. Pe- it was not quite a penalty, but Portland has a really good chance here. Just fouled, just out, probably twenty yards away. I would say. 20 yards. Diego Valeri is going to take this free kick. He is well, god tier. And kicks. I feel like since a lot of the time the NFL takes former soccer players and turns them into kickers who make, you know, 40 plus yard field goals consistently as long as their name's not Robert Aguayo. <laughs> Roberto uh, Aguayo, one of the biggest busts in NFL history. You can waste taking a second, a round, second round pick for a kicker. Hey, Tampa. Rams are pretty great. What? Well, your coach Sean McVay, I love Sean McVay, on Hard Knocks, announced that he's creating an outdoor facility for his team to stay at. Awesome. In Sean, I trust. In Sean, I trust. That's all I have to say. All I have to say about Sean McVay. I love that man. Please never leave us. In Chargers news, Anthony Lynn revealed in the opening scene of Hard Knocks, which is going on right now, that he was infected with COVID nineteen. Oh fuck. So, all right. Diego Valeri to take it. Say by Gully yeah, Say. This is kind of an interesting story in the news. Did you see John Gruden faked having COVID? What? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. He, so he he got the the whole Raiders or whatever. Not Raiders, you know. They got on the video call right, and their uh, was a different coach, like their assistant coach or whatever. Got on. He said, "Hey guys, Gruden's got COVID. You know." We all need to stick together as a team, and like this whole speech on how they need to stick together and how everybody can get COVID. And then Gruden was fine. Yeah, like, nah, guys, he popped these like, nah, guys, I don't get COVID. Just to prove, he's like, it's just to prove so that that anybody can get COVID, even the most important person. Oh, Derek Carr got COVID. No. Ooh. Uh, Gruden probably wishes. Kind of an interesting story. I thought it was funny. Honestly, though, sounds sounds like him. Sounds like Gruden. 
I feel like Gruden's just gonna say that Derek Carr tests positive. And then he just so, can't play. Yeah, but every week. Every single week. Oh yeah, Derek Carr tests positive. He's, he's still positive, guys. We test him three times a day. Positive, positive, positive. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about those tests. Mariota though, he's been clean every single oh. time. Oh, 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 two one Portland. There goes my prediction. Fuck. Well, you tried. I did. Who was it that scored? Oh, um, Sarich just scored well, what on a tap in the, in, the, on the, in the 65th minute. Oh. So Portland is up 2-1. The MLS There's is back There's still 25 there. minutes. Well, who's going next in the uh, no, spin I said to win contest? Right franchise mode. Brendan is next in franchise mode. All right, Brendan. Please, please, no, please. Who would you like here? We have The Seattle Kraken. No, no, no. We're not allowed. We have the Chargers. I want the, the Washington Bears. Washington football team, the Colts, the Bears, the Raiders, the Rams, and the Steelers and the Bills. Literally, I want the Bears or the Rams just to piss off. No, Nova. literally just get any other team except for the Bears and Rams, and we are totally fine. I want fine. the Bears and the Rams, Rams just to Rams, pick Rams, off. No, I don't, Rams, I don't Rams, want to give Rams, I don't Rams, want the Rams. I really want the Bears. Duh, Bears. I'd rather, take the, I'd rather take the Rams and the Bears. I just want the Bears because I just want to just say it out loud in front of everyone. We all want Rams, the Bears. Rams, Rams, Rams. Well, that's because... Duncan and I are going to make Mitch MVP, and then you two are going to cut Mitch. Of course you're going to cut Mitch. You're going to trade Mitch to the Packers. I'm not going to trade Mitch to the Packers. I don't want Mitch 10 feet from Packers facility. Mitch is <laughs> going to take over for Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to tra- no. <laughs> trade Mitch Trubisky for a half or a half Mitch jar Tr- of mustard and a ham sandwich. I'm going to tra- trade Mitch Trubisky for going to Mitch you. I would trade. I don't hate that trade. <laughs> I would trade Mitch Trubisky for a free meal at Subway. I would trade Mr. Trubisky that's for a fifty dollars Applebee's gift card. <laughs> <laughs> but that's wow. that's more than a free meal at Subway. Are you gonna, are you gonna spend it? Yeah, I'm gonna spend it. Right, Come on, Rams, no Rams, Rams, no Rams. Rams. Come on, Rams. Bears, Bears. Stop, slow Bears. down. Keep going. No, keep Washington going. football keep going. Keep going. team. Oh, let's go. Damn it. Washington in. football team. I thought somebody's already We're winning the damn Super Bowl. Hear me out. It might not be last Hear me video, out. But. Hear me out. Poison. We're going to just infect the league with COVID, and then we will be the only ones left. So our fifth strings that are playing starters, just because that's what we have available to us, will be playing against seventh strings. Ah, uh, Washington football team. End of racism. So I hope the first thing you do is give them a name. No. No. They will... Henceforth, be called the Washington team. I'm actually just gonna ditch the Washington part too. Just team. They're just gonna be football team. <laughs> football team. <laughs> actually, they're gonna be the football team because that way, when we win the Super Bowl, it was the football team won the Super Bowl. Great game tonight against the Jets and the football team. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's so awful. Actually, just just the foot. <laughs> the Washington foots. No, no, no. Just foot. I think it should be the Washington Balls. Just, just the F. Just ball. Balls. Just the F, because we're the F in the chat. Watch your football team next week, Brendan. <laughs> we're ready for it. That leaves how many teams? One, two, three, four, five, seven teams left. Yeah, so uh, everybody will go around one more time, and then this actually, Brendan will have two more, everyone will have two more left, basically. Yep. So Chargers, Rams, Steelers, Bills, Bears. Duncan is next. Raiders, And then Bulls. me. Then no one. So yeah. good chance to get some Rams on there. I want to get the Rams. I'm surprised they've even lasted this. The two teams that I want have lasted this long. I don't get it. There's that's a, that's fate that I'm gonna get one of the two. You probably you know will get one, but there's a good you chance. You know what's funny? Both. Both. They're both still there. You have two chances. You have the theoretical chance to get both the teams you want. That'd be awesome. But I would, there's a high statistical chance that he won't get both. Your probability is that you'll get neither. Yeah. There is a, there is major. There, that's probably more likely than anything. But are you after? Or no, it's Duncan then it's you. No, it's Duncan then me then Noah. Oh yeah, that's right. So you've... So there's there are two more chances that they could go back to that. Yeah, they could. Ben could get the Rams, Duncan could get the Bears. Or sorry, don't get the Bears back. Get the I Rams. like my odds. I want the Bears. I want, I want the Rams. Just to make him mad? Yeah. Like, trade for Todd Gurley. No, no, no. <laughs> trade for Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> trade for you Goff would. for Trubisky. Straight trade. That's a great trade as well. For both sides. 
SoFi Stadium would burn before it even opens. What? So, do you guys want uh, do you want to end with our pickings for the week? Uh, yeah. So this uh, weekend is one of the biggest uh, UFC week. I guess UFC nights of the year. Uh, it's in Vegas. It's headlined by two of the greatest fighters of all time. Definitely two of the best heavyweights of all time. And it's their third matchup overall. Uh, Stipe versus DC. It's going to be a great one. Uh, we're going to go with three of the, the main three fights on the card for our pick this week. So we got Junior Dos Santos going up against uh, Rodenstruck. We got Sugar Shot O'Malley going against Marlon Vera. And we got Stipe going up against DC. Uh, we might as well start off first with uh, Junior Dos Santos and Rosenstruck. Uh, Rosenstruck had a fight not that long ago, actually, where I'm pretty sure he knocked the guy out uh, easily first round. Uh, I'm not worried about him losing this fight. No. Yeah, he... Oh, well, just kidding. He lost in the first round. He got knocked out by Francis Naganu uh, last time. I'm still not worried. Francis Naganu is a different monster. Uh, Junior Dos Santos hasn't been all that fantastic as of late. Uh, his last win was back in January against Curtis Blades. But Curtis Blades has also lost since then as well. So, uh, I have... Rosen struck winning this one. I think it's going to be knockout, and I think it's going to be a third round knockout. Yeah, so I'm going to side with you here. I think Rosen will take this one too. I think he's just the uh, the bigger, more physical guy in this fight. So I think I, I do think it's going to be knockout too. I think it's probably going to be the fourth or fifth round. It's going to be a little later, but it's going to happen. Yeah, I have uh, Rosen struck as well. Um, I think he is a bit bigger, more physical fighter. Um, longer reach, so be able to connect on those punches and all that good stuff. Um, I'm just looking at his statistics here. Um, slightly, well, I mean, they're pretty similar on strike accuracy, yeah. but, um, yeah. And he is younger, isn't he? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, rolls and struck. Uh, so, my pick for this one is pacifism. There's no real winners when uh, you're fighting. Unless you bring a gun. No, no, no. There's no real winners. So who's your real pick, Brendan? Passivism. Uh, Junior DeSantos or Jazza They Uno both lose. Fighting. Okay. You're no fun. You want to go to the next fight? Uh, yeah, I'm loving this next fight. Uh, I Shirt too. O'Malley. Probably uh, one of my top three fighters. I love watching him fight. I love his trash talk. He reminds me of a Conor McGregor. And his... He has, like, a same tattoo, like, him on the... Kind of. And he thinks he's all that. He's 12 uh, Yeah. He's best buds with Joe Rogan. He's... Gets high in his off time. He likes to do random things with his hair. Yeah. Uh, he's very accurate. He is very really accurate. He... In both accuracy sets, he is significantly more accurate than his opponent. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, he's not... He's still not facing somebody that's ranked. Um, so part of the reason that the bigger guys like Cody Gilbrand and stuff like that are saying that he's all talk and he's a punk and stuff is because he's knocked these guys out, but it's unranked guys, so it's not even top ten fighters in the division. So that's the thing. But I think Shook Sean O'Malley going to get the easy victory here. I think oh, yeah. it's going to be a knockout in the first round. Uh, I don't think he's going to try the running knee to start out, but I think if the round goes to the second round, I think he will go for that knee to take him out. Yeah, I think, obviously, he has a better record. He's better accuracy. He's bigger. I think it's going to be a pretty easy fight for Sean O'Malley. I do think that Marlon will stick it out to the second round, but it's going to be a really early second round. Sean O'Malley's going to come out swinging, bop, 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 knocked out. I like it. I like it. No, yeah, Sean O'Malley's going to kill him. Um, has the height advantage, has the reach advantage, more accurate with his with his strikes, and I think that'll play a huge role. And he, like you said, he hasn't really faced any ranked fighters, and he's continuing facing a fighter that's inferior to him. So, uh, yeah, Sean O'Malley, I can see it going maximum two rounds, but that's it. 
So the main event of the card. Uh, oh, I picked past because past night too. Oh, okay. Yeah, we figured because you're lame like that. Oof. Um, choosing pacifism over fights. Come on. Pacifism. Anyways, it's Stipe versus DC. Uh, crazy uh, history between them. DC won the first one. Stipe won a controversial one the second time. Uh, this has been over like three years. So they each fight. Uh, Stipe's the champion right now. Facing DC. This is cementing DC's legacy as either the greatest heavyweight of all time or the second greatest heavyweight of all time to Mer- uh, Stipe. Um, I think it's going to be a great fight. Both have been training very, very hard for it. And, uh, and I have DC winning, but I would not be surprised if it went the other way, sadly. Uh, I do think that it's going to last most of the five rounds. I don't think it's going to make it to the end. Uh, it depends on who the ref is, I guess, whether you're going to stop it or not. But And these big fights like this, commonly the refs are a little more lenient with giving guys times to react and stuff. Yeah. And so I have DC winning, but not by much. Yeah, so I have I have Stipe winning. Uh, he is the current champion. I think again, I think it's gonna be a good fight. Uh, he does have the height advantage, just has a rate advantage. Uh, he does way less though, but it's not by much. Uh, I think it's gonna be a good fight. I think Stipe's gonna is going to knock out him, Daniel. Uh, it's gonna be last second of the fourth round. Stipe's gonna have one last flurry of blows before the, they call it. And he's going to knock him out. I think Daniel Cormier is going to win. I think he's going to solidify his status as the greatest heavyweight of all time. I think it goes the distance. Oh. It goes the distance. But Daniel Cormier gets the edge. And then do you think DC is actually going to retire after this fight? He has said that he's he thinks he's going <laughs> to. Yes, I do think this but. is the way to go out. You win this You win this title, you're probably inarguably the greatest heavyweight of all time. Right. Retire on top. Do you think if he loses, he'll retire still? No. Okay. I I think the same way. I think if he loses, he's pride's going to get in his way, and he's going to have to go another fight. Even if he takes a fight against a guy that doesn't stand a chance against him just to get away right. to end his career, I think that's what's going to happen. Right. Brendan, who do you have won in this fight? Pacifism. There's no real winner All when right. you're fighting. So just to even it out, Brendan has... Uh, Stipe winning? No, passing this. Right? Uh, See, I'm actually going to win because uh, mid fight, I'm going to run out there with a chainsaw. Oh. That's going to throw everything off. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Chase him around the octagon a little bit. <laughs> I'm excited for you. They See trip this and again. they fall. And that's how you knock them off. No, man. No. <laughs> no. No slicing people in half. I, say, I don't know if I want to see that yet. Yeah. Uh, we'll see who trips first. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> We'll see you first. <laughs> and I think that's how we're going to end the podcast this week. Perfect. Uh, Pat McAfee's going to kill M. Cole. Mm-hmm. Just to recap. Hope he does. Uh, MLS going great. Finals going on. It's 2-1. to 2-1 Portland. Yep. Portland. With, with uh, 12 minutes ago in regular time. The NHL playoffs have just kicked off with some couple good games already. Mm-hmm. The MLB is a shit show, but it's, it's fine in its way. So I might just have play delete on. the Cardinals. Yeah. We hope the NFL comes back strong and ready to play with yep. little COVID. College and football is run by money hungry, terrible people. Yeah. And somebody at UFC is going to lose an arm. Oh, yeah. The NBA is going strong. Because I'm bringing the chainsaw. <laughs> That's all for this week's podcast. I'm Ben. <coughs> I'm Ben. I'm Noah. Noah, if you have COVID, I, we just heard his coughing. I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay. I'm wearing a mask, guys, just so you know. <laughs> He's right, I'm the guy most likely to trip. Tune in to uh, our social media assets for all of this.